similar to Minister Fries. Um, you know, we just started the phase three campaign and I told my husband, I said, we have to do this. I didn't know how we were going to do it, but I knew that we needed to sow into the kingdom of God for whatever he was trying to do in order to get what we needed to get for our house. So pastor, I want to say, I don't remember when, but he spoke to me. I know it was the end of last year in regards to a shift in my career. So I was like, okay, I hear you guys. So I started applying for jobs and doing interviews and I was qualified. In some situations I was overqualified and I didn't get the job. And I couldn't for the life of me figure out why. It's like, okay, well, you know, the prophet said that there's gonna be a shift in my career. He said the door was opening, but where is it? So some months pass and then phase three comes and my husband and I said, hey, I was at home doing online service. He was in service and I said, make sure you do our pledge. And I was probably getting on his nerves because I was texting him during service like, hey, did you do it? Did you submit it? We have to do this, did you do it? He's like, yes, I did it, I did it. So I wanna say within a week of that, I got a call for an interview. And then the next week I got a call being offered the job. And then after that, they called me and they let me know, hey, so we're gonna offer you X amount of dollars. It's $12,000 more a year than I make now. Man. Wow, glory. Hallelujah. Solely, so I believe it's only for God's glory, of course. We didn't have the seed for our phase three, but we knew we were gonna do it. And I believe because we had our faith and our hearts in the right place, God provided that seed. And I believe it's Second Corinthians 9, 10, where it says that he provides seed for the sower. So if you haven't taken your pledge yet, or if you're unsure of how you're gonna do it, set your faith, set your expectation, take the pledge and put it in God's hands.
Hallelujah. Can we just worship the Lord for a moment? Glory to your name, O oh Father. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, Father. We worship you this morning, God. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory, oh God, because you're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're worthy, Lord. There's nobody like you, God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we magnify your name this morning, God. We lift you up because you are worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory to your name, oh God. Oh God, we bless your name. This is a day you made, God, and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it, God. We will forever give you the praise because you are worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, Abundant Life Church International. Glory to God. We welcome you to our Sunday morning service. On behalf of Apostle Kirkpatrick and Lady Kim Kirkpatrick, we thank you so much for joining us this morning. To our online viewing audience, good morning to you. Thank you for tuning in as well. we like to ask you to take a minute and hit like, hit share, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss anything. And lastly, go and grab some people to come and watch with you, at least five, because they don't need to miss this. This is going to be life-changing, amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Proverbs 18, 21 tells us that death and life is in the power of our tongue. So we can speak death or we can speak life. John 6, 63 says the word is spirit and life. So one way to speak life is to speak the word. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning we're going to take a few minutes and we're going to speak life. Hallelujah. We're going to make some faith proclamations. And we're going to speak the word of God over ourselves. Amen. So if you would, please join with me and repeat after me. I am dead to sin. And I'm alive unto God. I have the life of God in me. I have the nature of God in me. And I have the ability of God in me. I reign as a king in life. With long life, God will satisfy me. I will not grow weary and my eyes will not be dim. My mouth will be satisfied with good things and my youth is renewed like the eagles. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. And the righteous is not forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I have everything that I need my days of living in shortage are over forever. God loves me. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. 
The greater one is on the inside of me. And I have the peace of God on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Give him some praise for that. Glory to God. We thank you. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. I will not be moved by what I see. I will not be moved by what I hear. And I will not be moved by the circumstances. I walk by faith and not by sight. So I will act accordingly, speak accordingly, and expect results. All of God's promises are yes and amen. And God is not slack concerning his promise. God's will for me is that I prosper and he takes pleasure in my prosperity. Hallelujah. Give him some praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When I call on the Lord, he answers me. God gives me wisdom and I increase daily in it. God restores me. God renews me. God is always working on my behalf. I have the mind of Christ. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I can cast all of my cares on the Lord because he cares for me. I abide under God's shadow. He keeps me stable and fixed under his wing. God instructs me and teaches me in the way I should go. He guides me with his eye. He goes before me and makes crooked places straight. I abide in Jesus and he abides in me. I take his yoke and he gives me rest. I don't worry about tomorrow. God takes care of me. I seek first the kingdom of God and I do not have to be concerned or take thought for what I shall eat, drink, or put on. My heavenly father knows I have need of those things and he supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will dwell in the presence of God and be filled with fullness of joy and pleasures evermore. My head is lifted up. I'm an overcomer. I am not defeated. I am a winner and I have victory in every area of my life in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Well give him some praise. Glory. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah.
and I'm breathing right there. God, we say thank you. Lord, we give you the highest praise this morning. Oh God, we've got a reason to continue to give you praise. Thank you, Lord. God, we'll praise you on the mountaintop. We'll praise you in the valley. We'll praise you if we're feeling. We'll praise you if you don't. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and just clap your hands with me if you will. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll praise in the valley. I'll praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm shook. I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. I'll praise when surrounded. Because praise is the waters. My enemies drowned in. As long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing.
send my worship to you. Anybody's testimony? As a long as I've got breath in this old body, I will always present my worship, my worship to you. I will not be silent. I will no, I won't. Not be
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Good morning, Abundant Life Church International. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. On behalf of Apostle Kirkpatrick and Lady Kim Kirkpatrick, we thank you so much for joining us this morning to our online viewing audience. Thank you for joining us as well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, at this time, we would like to recognize any first-time guest. If you are visiting with us for the very first time, can you just wave your hand at me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, what our ushers are bringing to you is our first-time guest packet. There are a couple of things there. There's something that lets you know a little more about who we are. And then there is a Let's Connect card that we would like to ask you to fill out. And you can give that to an usher as you leave. Can we give them one more hand? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for our guest. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Well, we're going to receive our morning announcements at this time. So if you would, please turn your attention to the screen. Thank you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. ALCI family and friends, welcome to your weekly highlights. Join Apostle Kirkpatrick for our Sunday Empowerment Prayer Zoom this evening at 8 p.m. Check your inbox or ALCI's member and friends Facebook page for the Zoom link. We look forward to seeing everyone tonight on Zoom at 8 p.m. ALCI's Monday Corporate Prayer Call is each Monday evening at 6.30 p.m. The call-in number is on our screen. Otherwise, check your inbox or go to our website at www.edwardkirkpatrick.org for the call-in number. Join us for our Tuesday evening Bible study, 7.15 p.m. here at Abundant Life Church International. Bring your Bible, pad, and pen and come with an expectation to receive. Our children's ministry will be open at 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you all in Sanctuary Tuesday at 7.15 p.m. for Bible study. ALCI in Sanctuary corporate prayer is each Wednesday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. So plan to join the church body for one hour of powerful prayer this Wednesday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. As Apostle has reminded us, prayer time is never wasted time but invested time. AOCI, we are excited that our teens ministry is in full force. The teens ministry is held every second and fourth Sunday of the month at 10 a.m. Teens will meet in the upstairs room located in the sanctuary. Teens join us every second and fourth Sunday at 10 a.m. ALCI, mark your calendar for our upcoming healing seminar Friday, March the 22nd at 7 p.m. and the healing school. Saturday, March 23rd at 10 a.m. here at ALCI. On Friday, the 22nd, Apostle Kirkpatrick will teach us how to build our faith for healing and share the keys to healing the sick. Then on Saturday, the 23rd at 10 a.m., Apostle will continue with the healing school. This will not only be a time for teaching, but a time of demonstration. So bring the sick, bound, addicted, depressed, and oppressed, and experience the manifested healing power of the Spirit of God. Whether spiritual, emotional, physical, or even financial, there is nothing too hard for God. Again, March 22nd at 7 p.m. and March the 23rd at 10 a.m. here at Abundant Life Church International. Women of ALCI, did you know that the month of March is Women History Month? ALCI's marketing ministry would like to celebrate you, not only as a member of our congregation, but as a woman of God living in her purpose. If you would like to be highlighted in our women's appreciation video, submit a picture of yourself with a description word, which encompasses the women or the woman that you are. Pictures with your descriptive word can be emailed to marketing at edwardkirkpatrick.org by Monday, March the 25th. 
the Women's Appreciation video will be released Sunday, March the 31st on our ministry's social media channels. All images must be professional nature and submitted by March the 25th. Late submissions will not be accepted, so ensure the project is complete. We look forward to celebrating the God that resides in you. ALCI's family and friends, mark your calendars for our next Financial Champions Rally, April 13th and 14th, featuring Bishop James Payne, founder and director of James Payne Ministries Incorporated of Nashville, Tennessee. Bishop Payne will facilitate a financial workshop on Saturday, April 13th at 11 a.m. here at ALCI. Then Bishop Payne will minister Sunday, April 14th at both the 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. worship services. You don't want to miss this. Again, April 13th and 14th for our next Financial Champions Rally. Also, Sunday, April the 14th, Apostle Kirk Patrick will be a guest minister at Abiding Love Church where the elder Micah E. Huggins is pastor. Service will be held in the chapel of West Market Street, United Methodist Church, located 302 West Market Street, Greensboro, North Carolina. Service time is 2 p.m. So let's make plans to support our apostle Sunday, April the 14th at 2 p.m. as he ministers the word at Abiding Love Church, located at the chapel of West Market Street, United Methodist Church, 302 West Market Street, Greensboro. ALCI's next baptism ceremony is scheduled for Saturday, April the 20th at 10 a.m. If you would like to be baptized, scan the QR code to complete the sign-up or simply add your name to the sign-up sheet located in the foyer. If a minor, parents please add your name and contact information as well. Again, Baptism Ceremony Saturday, April the 20th here at ALCI. All married couples, mark your calendars for the next Marriage Matters Workshop. Saturday, April 27th, 11 a.m. here at Abundant Life Church International. Couples, please sign up for the event by scanning the QR code on your screen or the QR code on the flyer in the foyer. Again, Marriage Matters Workshop, April 27th at 11 a.m. Sign up required. At Abundant Life, there are many opportunities to serve. We have several ministries seeking volunteers. Our children's ministry, our newly formed new member intake team, the media ministry, and the music ministry, just to name a few. If you are interested in serving in these or any of our other ministries, we have room for you here. Simply see the sign-up sheets in our foyer or see one of the media team members at the media booth or simply email info at edwardkirkpatrick.org and we will get you connected. Sunday, March 31st is Resurrection Sunday. We will have one combined service at 10 a.m. Let's all come together to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. So mark your calendars, Sunday, March 31st, one combined service at 10 a.m. here at Abundant Life Church International. Greetings, ALCI family partners, members, and friends. I'm excited to announce that our very own Apostle Kirk Patrick will be celebrating his birthday on April 5th. Yay! Come on and celebrate it. Hallelujah. In 1 Timothy 5, 17, the Apostle Paul encouraged believers to so double honor to their leaders who manage or rule well. Those who preach, teach, and labor in the Word of God. Paul is simply saying, honor them with your financial seed and also honor the office they hold. As a ministry, we want our ALCI family partners, members, and friends to join us in celebrating and honoring Apostle Kurt Patrick on his special day. With birthday cards filled with heartfelt words of appreciation and love, along with monetary gifts such as cash or gift cards. There are a number of ways in which you can sow your gifts. You can sow to him via Cash App. His Cash App tag is dollar sign life l-i-f-e the number two the max again dollar sign life the number two the max we want all cards and seeds of love in by sunday april 7th 
However, if you can't meet the deadline, feel free to sow into his life through the month of April. If you have any questions, please email us at info at edwardkirkpatrick.org. Grace and peace. Praise God. Anybody know that God is the everlasting God? He's the God that we build our hope and our trust on. He's the one we put our trust in. God, we thank you for being that faithful God who's everlasting. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be afraid because we know that the Lord is the one that is before us. We know that the Lord is the one who fights our battles. We thank you, God, for being our sustainer. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is our light and salvation. Whom shall we fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. Thank you, God. I will trust in you. Um, the Lord is my light. If you know it, sing it along with us. Whom shall I be? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is our light. The Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? Yes, Lord. I will wait on you. Anybody waiting on the Lord? We thank you, God, for answered prayers coming through. Thank you, God. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Yes, oh Lord, we will. I will trust. The Lord is my light and salvation. Yes, you are, oh God. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is. He's my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Oh Lord, I will wait on you. Yes, I will wait on you, Lord. I will wait. We know in the end it will not tarry. I will trust. Trust in you. I will trust. Oh, I will remain. Yes, Lord, I will remain confident in. I will see the goodness of. We will not fail. We'll see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, yes. I will see the goodness of the Lord. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on his love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. We serve the everlasting God. We set our hope. We set our hope on him. We set our hope on his love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God, you are, you are, we set our hope on you, we set our eyes on you, Jesus, we set our eyes on the Father, we set our minds on the Father, He's the everlasting God, oh, you are, oh, you are, we set our hope on you, Lord. Oh, 
upon his love. He said, I hope for no one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. Come on and tell the Lord. We said, I hope on the God. We said, I hope. We said, I hope on the Lord. We said, I hope on the Lord. We said, I hope on the Lord. He's the everlasting God. He's the everlasting God. You're the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. I will remain confident in Him. I will see Him, His goodness for sure. We will remain confident in this. We will see the goodness of the Lord. David said, I would have fainted had not I believed to see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident. I will remain confident. You gotta remain confident. You gotta remain confident. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Say, I will remain. You ought to speak that on your sin. You ought to believe that in your heart. You ought to carry that hope with you today. I will remain. Confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain. Yes, I will. I will see the goodness of the Lord. One more time, all over the building, I will remain. I will remain. Confident. Confident in it. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, yes. Come on and worship God. How many of you are confident? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I am confident. That I will see the goodness of the Lord. Look, look at your neighbor and say, I'm confident that I will see the goodness of the Lord. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. You're going to see the goodness of God. You're going to see the goodness of God. You're going to see the goodness of God. I said, you're going to see the goodness of God. How many know God can take a bad situation and turn it around for your good? Do I have any witnesses in here? You're about to see the goodness. Oh, you ought to just look at a neighbor with a smile on your face and tell them you're about to see the goodness of the Lord. You're about to see the goodness of the Lord. You are about to see the goodness of the Lord. And I want to I want to just encourage you today. Don't you give up right now. Don't you faint. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you quit. You are too close to a miracle. You are too close to a breakthrough. You are too close to a turnaround. You are about to see the goodness of the Lord. Am I talking to anybody in this house? Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to God. You're about to see the goodness. Glory. Now, I believe the sister shared with us today. She said, I would have fainted. That's a scripture. The psalmist said, I would have given up. I would have caved in. I would have quit. Had I not believed. Is there anybody still believing? Had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord listen to that in the land of the living that means you can't die until you see the goodness oh my Lord you're gonna live to see it happen I wish I had somebody up in this life the Lord, you're going to live to see it happen. What the devil meant for your evil, God is getting ready to use it for your good. I'm not, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm only talking to the people that believe what I'm saying. 
Where, where are my believers at? Does anybody believe it? You're going to see the goodness of the Lord. Some, you've seen some bad days. And you've gone through some bad weeks. And some bad months. And some bad years. But I'm here to tell you you're about to see some good days. Good days are here. Good times are here. Is there anybody that believe it? Now, I, I, I'm getting ready to move on, but I feel prophetic right now. And I, I, need, I need somebody to help me prophesy. And you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. The Bible says you can prophesy according to the proportion of your faith. Do you have any faith? I'm going to ask the question again. Do you have any faith? Do you believe that what you say comes to pass? Yes. Do you believe you can prophesy and speak things into existence? Yes. Well, I want you to do me a favor right now and get out of your seat. What did I say? That means you're not just going to turn to the neighbor to the left or to the right. You're going to get out of your seat and you're going to go find three people. How many people? Three. How many people? three people and you're going to tell them these words prophetically say you are about to see the goodness of the Lord go ahead and tell them go ahead and tell them you're about to see the goodness of the Lord you're about to see the goodness of the Lord you're about to see the goodness of the Lord See the goodness? You're about to see the goodness? That's right, just encourage your neighbor. You can, you can be seated. You are about to see. You know, oh wow. You know what I just heard in my spirit? I just heard this in my spirit. Not only will you see the goodness of the Lord, you will be the goodness of the Lord. Some of you are getting ready to be the goodness of the Lord that others see. Oh, I just heard that. People are gonna look. People are gonna look at you, and they're gonna say, "There goes the goodness of the Lord." Your life is getting ready to be a reflection, an extension of His goodness. Yes, your life will be a testimony. A testimony of the goodness of God. Your life will be a testimony and a reflection of the goodness of God. How many of you believe that? Praise God. And it is so. And it is so. Well, we greet you with Jesus' joy. Again, it is good to be in the house of the Lord once Again, I'm glad to be here today. How many of you are glad to be here? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We want to take this opportunity again just to say welcome to all of our guests. Come on, let's thank God for them one more time. All of our guests, thank you for being with us. We certainly appreciate your presence. 
And to those of you who are watching online, thank you for your viewing presence as well. Really quickly, before we minister to the Lord and then worship Him and I give it, I want to just highlight two quick announcements. Amen. Of course, the first one is we have, amen, the healing school coming up this coming Friday and Saturday. Amen. It's going to be powerful. And I want to encourage you, amen, to come and bring someone with you to the healing school this Friday at 7 o'clock. And then Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Now, the healing school is designed with you in mind. It's going to be a time of teaching. But more than that, it's going to be a time of impartation. A time where we minister to the people who are dealing with different ailments, infirmities, and sicknesses. Now, we are seeing the power of God in a very um, amplified manner. People are receiving healing. I'm telling you, if I shared some of the testimonies of people who've been healed over the phone, People that I'm just praying for on a daily basis who are receiving instant healing and instant miracles. We're seeing the hand of God in a very supernatural way. And I want to encourage you to bring your family and friends to the healing school this coming Friday at 7 p.m. We're going to teach God's word. We're going to show you principles on how to live a healthy life. Amen. If you're sick in body, if you're sick in soul, if you're bound, oppressed, depressed, Maybe you're going through some things mentally and emotionally and you need to be delivered. This is going to be your opportunity to experience God's freedom in every area of your life. So meet me this coming Friday. If you're watching online, I want to encourage you, amen, to get here to the healing school because I believe God's got a miracle with your name on it. It's tailor-made just for you. And I can promise you, one touch from God will make all the difference in your life. Amen. So meet me for the healing school, March 22nd and 23rd. And then also listen, I want to encourage you to be a part of our resurrection celebration Sunday. Amen. The last Sunday this month, we're having one combined service and it's going to be an awesome time. God has given me a special word that I'll share, but more importantly, amen, we're going to see the resurrected power of Jesus on display. How many know we don't serve a dead God? The God we serve is alive and well. Amen. He's still healing. He's still delivering. And he's still working miracles. So we want you to be a part. And listen, I want to encourage you to get here on time. Get here early because we've got some stuff that we're going to be doing. Amen. The music ministry, dancers, all of that stuff. Amen. Even we're going to be blessed by a children's ministry on that Sunday morning. They're going to be doing some awesome things. So all of this is going to be happening at the very beginning of the service. So don't come in, you know, too late because you're going to miss it. Get here on time. Hallelujah. So you can enjoy, amen, everything that they have prepared for us. All right. Well, it is opportunity for prosperity time. Are you excited about it? Amen. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, please. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter number 6. I want to talk about breaking mammon's power. Breaking mammon's power. Mammon is a spirit that rest on money it is not money per se it is a spirit it's a spirit that rests on money now look what he says in Matthew chapter number 6 and verse 24 he says no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, notice Jesus says no man can serve two masters. That's interesting that he um, qualifies mammon as a master. So he says no man can serve two masters. It's impossible for you to serve both God and mammon at the same time. So you're either going to serve mammon or you're going to serve God. Are you hearing that? Now, again, when we hear the word mammon, that's an old English word that is used to represent money. But from a biblical sense, the word mammon is the spirit that rests on money. In other words, there is a spirit that's on your money right now. The money you have in your purse, your pocketbook, your wallet, wherever it is, the bank, there's a spirit that rests on it. Either the spirit of God is on your money or the spirit of mammon is on your money. Now, let me help you to understand. When the spirit of God is on your money, then your money has the potential or the capability to multiply and increase. That's the only way it can increase. 
That's the only way it can multiply if the Spirit of God is upon it. Now, how does the Spirit of God come upon our money? When we submit it to the Lordship of Jesus. Meaning, when we use money for the purposes of advancing the kingdom of God. When you use money in a righteous way, then the Spirit of God comes upon it and empowers it so that it can begin to multiply and it can bring increase into your life. But when you refuse to submit money to God, then you open your money up to a spirit called mammon. And mammon is the spirit of this fallen world. Mammon is the spirit of this fallen world. It is a spirit that tells you that there is another way to get financially free. It is a spirit that tells you there's another way to be financially blessed. Now, how many of you know people who uh, have very, very good paying jobs? I mean, in other words, they, they make a great salary. They make a great, you know, wage. They get paid a lot of money. But yet, they still struggle financially. Seems like they still can't make ends meet. Or you know persons who've matriculated through universities, they got a bunch of degrees and you know all of these things behind their names, but yet they're still struggling. Because see, mammon tells you there's another way to be blessed. There's another way to be financially independent. There's another way outside of what God has told us to do. That's what mammon does. And mammon is a spirit, but it's a lion spirit. Because what mammon does is mammon will promise you big things. You would have identity. You would have independence. You would have power. And you would have freedom. Mammon tells you that it can insulate you from life's troubles. If you just had money, you wouldn't be going through these troubles. Well, I'm here to tell you that money in itself is not the answer. God is the answer. I said God is the answer. But when your money is submitted to God and his purposes, then God can bless your money and your needs can be met. But what we have to do is break the hold of mammon off our lives. See, when you think about mammon, it's nothing more than a system that Satan uses to seek worshipers. See, he's seeking for people to worship him. And you know, there are a lot of people bowing down at the altar of mammon. They serve materialistic stuff. They serve things more than they serve God. Is that right? For example, when you think about mammon, uh, you think about the opposition that the spirit is to the kingdom of God. Mammon tells us to buy and sell when God tells us to sow and reap. Mammon says cheat and steal and God says give and receive. Are you hearing that? It's no coincidence that in the last days in the book of Revelations, if you read the book of Revelations, one of the things that the Antichrist will attempt to do is he will attempt to dominate people through the use of economics. Think about it. If you don't take the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell. He's going to use, see, he works through the medium of money to control the systems of the world. Are you hearing me? And so we cannot allow mammon to control us. That's why we have to make sure that we listen to the Holy Spirit and we're led by him when it comes to giving. Being spirit-led in our giving because when you are spirit-led in your giving, you break mammon's influence. You tell mammon, nope, you're not controlling me. You're not going to influence my decision. You're not going to determine my happiness or my peace or my security. I'm not happy because of what I have or what I don't have. I'm happy because I know who I am in God. And God is my source. Say out loud, God is my source. Say, I don't serve mammon. I serve God. See, you heard the scripture in closing. You heard the scripture that says, the love of money is the root of all evil. You remember that scripture? How many of you have heard that scripture? Most people think, yeah, you see, money's evil. No, money is not evil. He said, the love of money. See, when you crave and lust for it, he said, that's when it produces evil in your life. See, mammon tells you not to sow. Mammon tells you not to give. Mammon says, oh, if you give, you're not going to have enough for yourself. If you give, then who's going to look out for you? If you give, then what about your needs? That's what mammon says. But you got to say to mammon, no, I'm breaking your control off of my life. I'm not controlled by money. I yield my money to God and I trust that he will bless my money and cause my money to multiply and increase. Amen. Amen? Amen. Say breaking the control of mammon from my life how do you do it by giving 
Do you know that? The only safeguard against greed is to give. That's why God wants us to give. Not because he needs our money, but he wants our hearts to stay free from mammon and stay free from greed. Let's pray together. And as we sow our seed today and as we give, I want you for a moment to just think about what it is you're believing God for. What do you need God to do and to see in your life? And as you do this, I want you to release your faith in your, your seed and be begin to believe that as you sow and give, that blessings, the spirit of prosperity will come on your money and cause it to multiply and increase in your life. You believe that? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this privilege to give. We don't give because we have to. We give because we get to. We count it a joy and a privilege to share a portion of what you bless us with. We break the influence of mammon off of our lives. We will not be controlled by the spirit of mammon. But we yield our resources to the blessing that comes from God. Your word declares in Proverbs 10 that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and you add no sorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. As you come to the altar and bring your seed, I want you to worship God. And I want you to begin to let God know that the seed you're sowing and the gift you're giving is your love extended toward him. Come on and let's worship the Lord and our giving as we come and worship God this morning. I believe that. 
Thank you, praise team, musicians. Before we get into the word, I want to allow Sister Sinead to come and share a testimony. Can we get her mic? I thought it was a fascinating testimony. I want to hear it. You could just come up here. You, Sinead, just come. Come to the front. You're walking all the way around. You're walking the long way. You, you wasted my time for the world. <laughs> Give her a hand, y'all. Give her a hand. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Family, friends, all that grace and peace. <laughs> okay. Um, so so um, not too long ago, probably last month, um, I was telling the Lord how I was going to pass the test when it comes to money. And I told him, let me catch my breath, y'all. Don't start running. <laughs> um, I told him that I was going to pass the test. And whatever he told me to sow, that's what I would sow. Um, so I made the commitment to be obedient and to sow into apostles' life and the apostles' reward. And I was just like, Lord, this is for supernatural debt cancellation. And then I told him, of course, being obedient, apostles said, anytime that you sow a seed, be obedient and name it and claim it. So, um, so I said, all right, Lord, this is for supernatural debt cancellation. Um, the next day I received um, a notice in the mail that said that $8,886 was canceled. Wow. Wow. Somebody ought to praise God. Somebody ought to give God some glory. Just to be obedient, y'all. So you can pass the test. Pass the test. Lord, have come on, y'all. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. That, 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 was, that was some key things she said in her testimony that I hope we caught. She said that 
the Lord spoke to her and I remember the prophetic word that God gave it he spoke to me to her about passing the test I didn't know what that was about I just spoke what I heard and then she went before the Lord and prayed nobody asked her to give a certain amount amen nobody didn't even solicit an offering from her she heard from God and she obeyed God see the highest level of giving is to be led by the spirit not led by a man some of you waiting on somebody to tell you what to give you don't give until somebody come and call a line say I need 20 folks to give $100 you, you ought to grow graduate beyond that the Lord can speak to you where he's going to speak in here you're not going to hear it out here you're going to hear it inside of you the Lord has spoken to me many times inside and he says do this give this go here sow this you got to listen because God will talk to you about about seed sowing whenever he's got a harvest on his mind and then she exercised her faith with the principle of assigning the seed she gave the seed an assignment she said this seed is for debt cancellation and I remember the seed she sold because when I opened the envelope up I said wow that's a pretty significant seed it wasn't like it was five dollars not to say that that's not significant if that's all you got but I knew this was coming from a place of sacrifice I knew it when I opened the envelope I said oh and I prayed over that seed I remember I said Lord let this seed serve as a point of reference for her that was my exact words let this seed serve as a point of reference in other words she'll look back on whatever harvest you're getting ready to bring in her life and she'll know it was because of this seed and then over eight thousand dollars forgiven come on you tell me that ain't God oh man what a what an amazing testimony what an amazing testimony I just thank God for that get your Bibles and let's go to the word I want to share something with you today we've been teaching on the subject of love last week we talked about love the foundation for a successful family and we showed you in that message that there's no family problems you will ever encounter that love can't overcome no matter the issues in our relationships and our marriages and our families if we choose to love like God commands there's nothing there's nothing absolutely nothing that you're facing today that love cannot conquer today I want to talk about love versus selfishness because I made a statement last week if you remember I said the two most powerful forces that exist in the world today is love and selfishness love and selfishness and the question I want you to kind of ask yourself throughout today's teaching I want you to ask yourself is am I walking in the love of God or am I walking in selfishness am I walking in the love of God or am I walking in selfishness Matthew chapter 22 let's begin at verse 37 Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of your heart with all of your soul with all of your mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself hallelujah now we understand from recent teachings as early of la as early as last Sunday that we used an example of a shower rod or a curtain rod in your home and we showed you that we liken that rod to the love of God that rod is likened to the love of God when you have a shower curtain or you have a man um, 
you know, a curtain rod in the home, whatever hangs from that rod, if that rod falls, then everything connected or hanging from that rod will be affected. The love of God is like the rod in your shower. It's like that rod in your home. When love is affected, everything that hangs from it will be affected. Love operates everything in the kingdom of God's system. I said love operates everything in the kingdom of God's system. Now somebody says, well, I thought faith was the key to the kingdom. Yeah, it is. But remember, faith is empowered by love. The Bible says that faith worketh by love. In other words, if love is not at work, your faith is not working. Everything is affected by love. If love is out of place, your faith will not work. Your prayers will not work. Your prosperity will not work. Your healing will not work. Are you listening to me? Your deliverance will not work. Everything hangs from this rod called love. And so our focus has to be on this love that God has commanded us to live by. Now look at John chapter 13. John chapter 13. St. John chapter number 13. Walking in and demonstrating the love of God is the greatest thing that we can do as believers. Did you hear that? Walking in and demonstrating the love of God is the most important thing we can do as believers. There is nothing more important to our life as Christians than walking in the love of God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. In St. John chapter 13 verse 35, I want you to notice what the Bible says here. Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. And he tells us what this refers to. If you have love one to another. Now notice he says, all men will know that you are a follower of Jesus. You are a Christ follower because of your love that you have. So love identifies us as believers. Love is the identification mark. It is the very thing that distinguishes your Christianity. See, he didn't say by speaking in tongues, all men will know that you are my disciples. He didn't say by coming to church, all men shall know that you are my disciples. He didn't say by giving offerings and tithes, all men will know that you are my disciples. He said, love by this, by this, by this shall all men know. By this. First John, turn to first John chapter three. He says, by this, all men will know that you are my disciple. So if you're going to be identified as a disciple, then you must be perfected in the love of God. You've got to exercise and grow in the love of God. Are you listening to me? First John chapter three, verse 14, he says, we know, we know that we have passed from death unto life. Now, notice there, he says, we know that we have passed from death unto life. We know that we've been born out of spiritual death into spiritual life. How? Because we love the brethren. Somebody says, how do you know you're saved? How do you know that God has changed your life? How do you know that you're no longer the same person you used to be, that you're truly transformed by the gospel? Because you got love for brethren. God said, how can you say you love me whom you have never seen but hate your brother who you see every day? He said, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. Love is the strongest force in the earth. Now we've talked about the difference between human love and agape love. We talked about that last week. If you were not here, I encourage you to get the message. There's a difference between human love and agape. Agape is a Greek word that stands for love. Agape means unconditional, sacrificial love. 
That's the love that God has for us. It's a love that is unqualified. It's a love that is sacrificial. It is a love that is unconditional. God loves you unconditionally. His love is not based on conditions. His love is not based on the good things you do. His love is not based upon whether you, you earn it or you deserve it or you merit it through your own good works. It doesn't matter your performance. God's love is active toward us regardless of how we perform. And this is the love that he's given to us. This is the love that you have as a believer. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says that the Holy Spirit has shed abroad this love into your hearts. When you got saved, this love came with it. Salvation was a package deal. You didn't get saved and then get, you know, half of the package that God wanted to give you. When you got saved, he gave you everything that he had. Isn't that good news? You have the love of God. You have agape. You have this unconditional love. Agape love has no limits. Agape love has no limits. See, human love has limits. It, it, you know, human love loves you up to a certain limit. I'll love you up to this limit. But wait a minute. If you go beyond this, I can't love you no more. That's human love. We're not talking about human love. We're talking about a love that is not based on limits. We're talking about a love that is not based on how you feel. We're talking about a love that's not based on how you think. It's not based on emotions. Agape love is going to love and it doesn't need to be loved back in order to be active. So whether you love me back, it doesn't matter. This love that's called agape that has been shared abroad or Holy Ghost injected into me. This is the love that I have and it is always active regardless of how you treat me. Are you listening to me? But this emotional human love is conditional. It's based on your feelings. It's based on what you think. Hallelujah. How you treat me is going to determine how I treat you. See, that's a human love. This human love is two-sided. In other words, it, it has to be reciprocated in order to be given. In other words, you got to treat me right first on your side of the ledger before I treat you right. What would happen if we would begin to operate in this type of love where our marriages are concerned? Where our friendships are concerned, where our family relationships are concerned. If we chose, and I'll show you in a moment, that love, this type of love, has nothing to do with feelings. It's a decision. You've got to make a decision to walk in this love. Because I'm going to show you that God is going to hold you accountable when you don't. What if we love people without conditions? Without limits? Without... You know, uh, speculate. Well, I, I can only love you if, if you do this. If you do this, man, I, I love you. But if you don't, mm -mm, I'm not going to love you. See, this is how most people operate. But we got to change. Look at your name and say, we have to change. Oh, glory to God. Listen to me. God is not asking us to love him or each other with this type of human love. That's not the, the love he's asking us to love with. He's asking us to love him and each other with agape. Today, we're going to deal with this agape love. Notice, I want you to notice in, um, let's see, let's look at, um, go back to John 13, St. John. Let's go back there. Now, this is not a message that's going to get you excited. It ain't going to make you shout and run and hoop and holler. But I'll tell you what, it's going to produce results. And when results are produced, you're going to be running, hollering, and shouting and all that stuff. You, you, you're, going, you're going to see some mighty things happen in your life when you, when you walk in this type of love. Amen. Are you ready to, to, to walk in this type of love? Thank you, Jesus. Um, so he says here in, in John chapter 13, again, verse 35, let's go back here. He says, let's look at verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. 
So he said, I want you to love one another the same way I've loved you. Now question, how has God loved us? How has he loved us? Unconditionally, sacrificially, right? Without no strings attached. In fact, the Bible says, even while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, oh boy, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that amazing that God didn't wait for us to get our little lives together before he gave us love? But, you know, that's how we treat one another. We say, no, you got to get it together before I love you. No, but God kind of love learns to love people where they are. It doesn't say to people, you got to be this way, or you got to be that way, or you got to do this, or you got to do that in order for me to love you. No, it says, I love you for where you are and for who you are. Boy, if the church operates in this kind of love, can you imagine what would happen? We wouldn't have so many judgmental people in the body of Christ. We wouldn't have so much contention in relationships. Come on. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. So when, when God commands us to love, he says, love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Verse 35, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. He said, by this all men are going to know. Everybody's going to know that you have, that you are rather a disciple of mine because you have this love for one another. Boy, that's powerful. Okay, let's go back. Matthew 22. We're going to milk these scriptures today. Because I want you to get everything that's in it for you. It's time to grow up in love. Did you hear what I said? It's time to grow up in love. It's time to grow up in love. Too many of us are still children when it comes to love. It's time to mature. It's time to get out of our selfish selves. Mm -mm. Amen, amen. Yes, we got to let our selfish selves die. We got to deny our selfish selves. Deny your feelings. Deny your emotions. Deny how you feel. Deny your opinion. Well, this is how I feel. God didn't say love based on how you feel. I'm so glad He doesn't love me based on feelings. Look at verse 37. I'm back in Matthew 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Praise God. Now the word love in this verse is translated again in the Greek as agape, which means to love. So when the Bible instructs you to love God and your neighbor, it is referring to agape, which also means to totally give yourself over to. I want you to think about that. To totally give yourself over to. It means to totally commit. To totally commit. Now the concept of being totally committed to something is foreign to a lot of people. When you totally commit yourself to someone, then that means you're going to bind yourself to someone. Huh? That means you're going to put someone else first. Hallelujah. We know this concept. Some of us, we put our careers over family. Is that true? We've tied ourselves to people and to things that are not good for us. See, the world calls this kind of devotion um, being a, an addict or being addicted. That's what God is requiring of us. He's asking us today, will you be addicted to my love? Will you let it control you? Will you let it influence your decisions? Will you let it determine your actions and your behavior? That's what he wants. He wants this love to overwhelm you to such a degree that it controls everything you do. It controls everything you say. It controls everything you think about. I'm just trying to help you to gain concept today. This is what God wants. He wants this love. He wants you to become a God addict. 
so addicted to God that his divine love controls your thoughts, your mouth, and your attitude. Everything about your life is under the influence of this love. That's being so tied to God that you become one with him. You, you, you desire his will for your life above your own happiness. Oh, you didn't hear what I say. See, doing the will of God doesn't always make you happy. There's some things I had to do that was not, it didn't make me feel happy. Come on, somebody. But some of us, we're not willing to sacrifice our happiness at the expense of God's will. Some of us, we're in relationships, and you know good and well, those relationships, you, you shouldn't even be in them, but you're in them because it gives you pleasure. I'm walking heavy. Don't look at me with that tone of voice because I'll stay right here for a second. Now. If you want me to move to the next point, just say amen and smile. Amen. Y'all ain't caught on to that yet? If you go ahead and say amen and act happy, I'll move on. But if you sit there and look at me, I know, uh-oh, I done hit something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This will cost you in the long run. Moses said, I would rather suffer with the children of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. It's temporary. See, the kind of commitment that I'm talking about doesn't come cheap. It doesn't come cheap. It may cost you being misunderstood by family and friends. People say, I don't, I don't understand you. You don't, you, what's up, man? You, you, don't, you don't hang out with us no more. Hey, I don't see you much, man. What, 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 you all right? It, it may cost you been looked at as strange and been looked at as the oddball. Some of you, you want to please people too much. That's why you can't please God because you're busy trying to please people. You're too concerned about what they think about you and what their opinions of you are going to be and how they look at you and what they say about you. You know what I've come to learn? Hey Amen. I've learned this. I've learned this in my short time of living. I've learned that people are going to talk about you regardless of what you do. So I would rather them talk about me doing the will of God. Yes, it may cost you being lied on. It may cost you being disliked. Hallelujah. But people have the ability to make a choice about what they're tied to. You have the ability to make a choice about what you're tied to. There's some things you're tied to because you choose to be tied to. The devil. The devil is not the cause of every situation in your life. Your decisions are the causes of your situation. See, until you make some new decisions, you're going to keep experiencing the same results. You got to choose different in order to have different. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. Look at your neighbor and say, your choice matters. Every choice carries a consequence. Every choice will lead you down a path. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Some people, for example, attach themselves to darkness. They attach themselves to darkness. Let me show you something. Go to John chapter 3. Oh, blessed be God. You've got to choose to walk in love. I said, you got to what? Choose to walk in love. Choose to walk in love. I'm kind of going a different route from the 8 o'clock service. I, I hope y'all know that, don't you? The Lord led me to go a different route. You need to get the 8 o'clock message because I said some stuff I'm not going to say today at the 10, but it was good. So make sure you get both messages and put them together, and then you'll hear the conclusion of the whole matter. St. John chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse number 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And listen to this. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. There's some people who just love darkness. 
They love dark. They have attached themselves to darkness because of the choices that they've made. You know, all of us will reach impasses and come to crossroads and we've got to make a choice. You know, I had to make a choice early and on in life what I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. I had to make a choice. Oh, I can remember making the choice to stand for God as a young man. And I knew that would come with great persecution. Yes. I knew that I would be looked at as a little different. But I had to make a choice. And I wasn't different because I wasn't, you know, it's one thing when you a cool dude. Because I've always been a cool dude. You understand what I'm saying? I, I, you know, I'm just cool. I got swag. I had swag as a sinner. I got swag as a Christian. I, I mean, I just... I'm a swaggy dude, you understand? I'm just a, so it ain't like I'm a cornball kind of guy. I'm just cool. But, Jay, you know what I'm, <laughs> but when you make a decision, I'm going to stand for God, and I know it's going to cost me friends. And it cost me friends. And then when I got into the church, and I began to, fulfill my calling as a preacher and as a minister of the gospel, I had to make a stand. There was some choices I had to make. I could fit in with the who's who's club. I could be a part of the political preachers. I could get in. But if I did that, I would have to make choices to do some things that would cause me to compromise. If you're going to hang with us, you're going to have to do certain things. No, I choose not to hang with you because I make a choice to be tied to God. Y'all ain't hearing me. You've got to make decisions. Some people have tied themselves to the praises of men. They want the praises and the accolades of people. They would rather have people to praise them and to approve of them than for God to approve of them. Some people are committed to the praise of men rather than the praises of God. This type of... These type of people are in bondage. They're in bondage to people's opinions. They're in bondage to people's opinions. They're in bondage to what people think about them. Hallelujah. And you know what happens when you get in bondage to people's opinions? You become men pleasers. And I'm going to tell you something. If you live in your life to please men, you'll never be happy. Because here's the reality. I don't care how hard you try. It's impossible to please everybody. It, it, it goes back to the saying on loyalty. You cannot be loyal to everyone and be loyal to someone. Loyalty has to make a decision. I can't be loyal to everybody. I, my loyalty has to decide who I'm standing with and who I'm not standing with. But when you want to please everybody, when you want everybody to like you, when you want everybody to clap for you, when you want everybody to say, oh man, you are a great person. Listen. Doing the will of God sometimes is going to require that people will persecute you. They talked about Jesus. Who do you think you are? Jesus said, no servant is above his master. You're not above. If, if nobody criticized you, that would make you better than Jesus. And you're not better than Jesus. So when people talk about you, when people lie on you, when people criticize you, when people judge you, you in good company. Then there are those who are more concerned about building a good reputation with men over a good reputation with God. Yes, they want a good reputation with men. More than that, they want a good reputation with God. Are you hearing me? Let me show you something. Let me show you a verse. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all getting this? In John chapter 12, verse 43, it says, John 12, 43, For they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. How many of us love the praises of men? We want people to praise us. People to love us, people to accept us, people to like us more than we want God to like us. I'd rather God be pleased with me and you displeased than for you to be pleased and God to be displeased. That's the truth. 
Now, I, I'm telling you something that is so powerful. And this is something I had to deal with in my, in my young life. Because I was just a stickler. I, I wanted to make sure that I, I had a good reputation. And not that I'm, you know, and I'm not saying that you be careless and live in a kind of way you don't care nothing about your reputation. No, what I'm saying was I was so fixed on that. I was so fixated on making sure that, you know, my reputation was pristine and that, you know, uh, and that nobody had anything. But I come to find out people will lie on you. People will make up stuff about you. Come on now. No matter what you do. So you got to get free from people's opinions and what they think about you and, and what they, how they view you and just say, am I doing what God called me to do? If I'm doing the will of God, then that's all that matters. See, when you do the will of God, you can't be concerned about people's opinions. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to get free. Yes, because I'm telling you, people bondage is worse than demon bondage. I'm going to tell you what free me. The Lord spoke to me years ago in prayer. He said, if... You are not free from people, then you can't help me free people. That was for me. I thought I would share it, maybe to help you. But that's what he said to me. He said, if you are not free from people, you can't help me to free people. Are you tied to people, praises, the praises of men, trying to be a people pleaser? Are you tied to that? Untie yourself. You can do it with a decision. Did you know it? You can decide today, I'm done with trying to please people. From this day forward, I'm going to please God, no matter the cost. Some people tie themselves to rebellion. They feel as though they're too important to submit to authority. So whenever your focus is more on yourself than God, it's time for you to evaluate yourself and your motives. Amen. See, we've got to get rid of our selfishness. Because I said something at the 8 o'clock service. I said, when you make a decision to serve love, you turn your back on selfishness. But when you make a decision to serve selfishness, you turn your back on love. See, love is not a feeling, the agape love. It's a decision that's expressed through my actions. I decide to love and then I demonstrate it through my actions. See, it's not just I love you. That's just like a husband saying to his wife, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. You know, you're my oh, girl, I love you. But he never demonstrates it. He never shows her. Or you say to your children, I love you, I love you, I love you. But you never demonstrate that love. I don't want my kids to grow up and say, my daddy said he loved me, but he never demonstrated it. I try to show them and demonstrate to them that I love them. See, love is not just what you say. Love is what you do. Love is what you do. Hallelujah. Y'all got a few more minutes? Are y'all learning anything? All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm telling you, get the 8 o'clock service. I, I'm tempted to go back to some of those points. But you got to catch this. Don't tie yourself to the praise of men. Don't tie yourself to rebellion. Hallelujah. It's time for you to get untied from these things. Look at Luke chapter 11. St. Luke chapter 11. See, we're talking about this love that's devoted, that's totally given itself over. That's what God wants. To totally give yourself over. To doing it his way. Make up in your mind, I'm going to do it God's way no matter the cost. It may cost me. And it will cost you. I'm going to tell you something. Obeying God is going to cost you. It's going to cost you. It has cost me friendships. I mean 25-year friendships. 20-year relationships. It has cost me. I said, no, this is what I've got to do. Well, I don't agree with it. But you don't have to. It's not your decision to make. I know what God's called me to do. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? My wife can tell you. Sacrifice. That's sacrifices you got to make. How many sacrifices are we willing to make? See, the human love that, that we talked about earlier, this love only wants to love the love 
lovable and the lovely. It wants everything to be easy. I'll love you if you love me. Mm -mm. That's not the love of God we're talking about. The love of God loves when it's hard. Because remember what I said? See, when love is ready to grow, there has to be some resistance or pressure added to it. The reason some of us can't grow in love is because we run from the pressure. Every time we get a little pressure in a relationship, we're ready to find a new one. I'm done with you. I'm gone. Let me find me a new man. Let me find me a new woman. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this job. I'm, no, it's too much pressure here. I got to find another. I'm leaving this church. See, you can't grow and develop if every time pressure and uh, uh, trials come, you run from them. Remember, remember that God will allow certain things in order for you to exercise the love muscle. That person on the job that's irritating you and getting under your skin, see them as an opportunity for you to exercise. <laughs> Somebody said, I don't know about that one. That's all right. We're growing in grace. Look at the name and say, we got to grow in grace. Luke eleven forty three. He said, Warn to you Pharisees, for you love the utmost, uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. Look at there. You see? The Pharisees focus on their outward appearance and ignore the inner condition of their hearts. That's what we can't afford to do. We can't be like the Pharisees who look good on Sunday morning dressed up looking pretty on the outside but full of dead men's bones on the inside full of jealousy and envy and strife come on don't shout me down when I'm preaching good no we've got to work on the inside we do the same when our service comes from a desire to be seen rather than from a pure heart out of love for others there are people who can't serve in ministry if they're not out front. I can't be, I can't be a part of this if I'm not the leader. If, I, if I'm not the head of the chicken club, then I'm not going to serve on the club. If, if I'm not the president, see, no, that's, that's people who've tied themselves to the praises of men. Are you hearing me? Let me say this. Let me say this. Don't be a Christian on the outside only. Bring your inner life under God's control and your outer life will naturally reflect that. I don't want to just be a Christian on the outside only. I want my inner life to be a reflection of the Christ life in me so that it will exude through my outer life. See, people know when they're dealing with a fake. You can fool some people, but you can't fool everybody. Some people attach themselves to the world's system of operation. See, they've, they've become addicted to how the world does things. Even Christians. I'm saying so many... Uh, God. That's why I just try to stay off of social media and I'm trying to limit. I had a situation that happened and I think it was a blessing in disguise. I lost, I couldn't get uh, back into my account for some days. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, that wasn't an accident. Because when I look at some of the stuff, I said, wow, when you have people talking negative about the church and saying certain things. It's amazing to me. It's amazing. I'm not going into it. Y'all already know. I'm not here to make a judgment, but I'm just telling you it's some crazy stuff happening. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people are attached. They've attached themselves to the world system. The world system is in direct opposition to the word of God. You can't live like the world and expect to have godly results. You know, there ought to be a distinction between the church and the club. Yeah. 
But now we're trying to be relevant. We want to be relevant. We're trying to fit in. I have never seen a, a culture of people that want the world to like them because they act like them. Where is the distinction at? Where is the difference? Y'all ain't, y'all ain't liking this, I see. All right. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. God called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. There ought to be a distinction. People ought to be able to look at you and say, there's something different about you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Lord, help us. I never thought the day would come when saying certain things that's true would be so hard to bear. From people who say they love God. It's amazing. That's has been a change. Eh? I mean, the church has evolved. It's amazing to me. God, help us. Help us to contend for the faith that was once laid up for us. Go back to the old landmarks. Yeah, glory. We've got more education, but it seems like spiritually we've become... I don't know. What's happening? What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. God is raising up a new breed. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a danger. Look at this. In, in, in 2 Timothy 4 and 10, it says, For Demas has forsaken me. Notice why. Having loved this present world. Having loved this present world. Demas had a love for the present world. He loved the things in the world. He was attached to the things of the world. And he forsook the apostle Paul. He walked away. As a believer, you must remember that although you live in this world, you should not be in love with it. You shouldn't love this world more than you love the things of God. Are you hearing me? Amen. Okay, I'm going to share one more thing with you. In fact, I'm going to close with this. The world needs the light of Christ that's in your life. You are the light of the world. You're, you are not in darkness. You've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. And God wants you to be the light of the world. You shouldn't be trying to mix in with the world. Listen, I don't want people in the world to be so comfortable with me. You're trying to get everybody to be comfortable with you, to like you, and to, oh, yes, you know, you're so down to earth. You're so cool. The world needs light. I said the world needs light. The church should be the standard for the world in every area. The church should be, make sure that your gifts are used to love those who are in the world just as much as you love Christians. But don't let your gift be compromised because you're trying to fit in with the world and be like everybody in the world. Hallelujah. And the last one I'll share with you. Some people tie themselves to friends. They get tied only to their close little circle of friends. Only the people who love them back. Only the people who are nice to them. Oh, yeah, I love you, girl, because you know what? You love me. You give me love, and I give you love. No, we've got to learn how to love some people who may not give you no love back. Look at Luke chapter 6 in closing. Last scripture. Luke chapter 6. What are you tied to? What are you committed yourself to? Are you committing yourself to the love of God? Or are you committing yourself to these other things I've taught you today? What do you commit yourself to? What are you giving yourself over to? Don't tie yourself to just your little circle of friends. That's why we can't make the impact that we should make as the church because God didn't call us to our little circle of friends. He called us to the world. Hallelujah. He said in verse 32, if you love them which love you, what thank have you? In other words, he said, you ain't did nothing special. For sinners, he said, unbelievers also love those that love them. Untie yourself from the world and bind yourself to God to the point where nothing else matters as much as carrying out God's will for your life. Do that. Make that your commitment.
Make that your dedication. I'm going to tie myself to God. I'm going to tie myself to his word. I'm going to follow a man in his word and do what he told me to do, no matter what it may cost. Are you ready for that? This is the key. This is the key. You want to see your life prosper? You want to see the word of God work in your life on another level? Then commit yourself to this. Make a decision you're going to walk in love. Make a decision that you're going to deny yourself. And that may be difficult at times, but you got to make the choice. I'm going to do the word. I'm going to walk in the will of God. I'm going to tie myself to his word. I'm going to commit myself to God. And I know it may cost me some things. I know it may cost me friendships. It may cost me being misunderstood. It may cost me being talked about. It may cost me not being accepted by everybody. But that's okay. I got to do the will of God. Amen. Did you get blessed by the word today? Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, I want to pray for you quickly. Number one, I got four invitations, four invitations. Number one, if you're not saved, I want to pray for you. Let me tell you something. Salvation is the greatest miracle. There is no greater miracle than being born again. Amen. When you are born again, there's a different life that you have. There's a miracle life that comes on the inside of you. That's a life that you have when you're born again. And it's the life that only God can give. And it's simple. All you've got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And the Bible says you will be saved. So I want to pray for you today if you're not saved. Second of all, I want to pray for you if you need to recommit your life to Christ. Maybe you're saved, but you know, you've strayed away. You've detoured. You're, you're not walking in the path that God wants you to walk in. And today you say, I want to draw closer to the Lord. James said, if you draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. But he's waiting on you to make the first move. He's already done everything he's going to do. Now, will you make the move and draw closer to God? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. If you would like to recommit your life to Christ, rededicate yourself, get closer to God. This is not a time to be loose. When I say loose, I'm talking about following God from a distance like Peter did. This is the time to get close as you can to God. And today, if you're not close to him, if you're not as close to him as you need to be, today, make a decision. Again, it's a choice. See, you have a choice to receive Christ or reject him. He can't, he's not going to make you do anything. Will you, rec will you receive the gift or will you reject the gift? That's the question. Number three, if you're here today, you don't have a church. And maybe you've been praying and seeking God about a church and where you need to fit and belong and, and where you need to be a part. Maybe you're saying, hey, I, I need a family. I need to be a part of a community of believers where I can learn and grow and, and exercise my gifts. And, and I believe Abundant Life Church is where I need to be. If God is leading you here, I want to open the doors of our church. And then finally, I want to pray for you if you have a need in your life. Maybe you have sickness in your body. Maybe you're going through something emotionally, something relationally. You need God to do what only he can do. And I'm telling you, that's power in prayer. And prayer can do anything God can do. Because prayer and God are one and the same. So if you're here and you're not saved, you're here if you want to recommit your life to Christ. You're here because you don't have a church home. Or you're here because you desire prayer and you need God to do something supernatural in your life. On the count of three, I want you to just throw up your right hand. And I don't want you to be embarrassed or ashamed. Don't worry about, see, like I said, you got to get free from people's opinions. This is a decision you're making. When you stand before God one day, your homies are not going to stand with you. Your posse, your crew, amen. No, it's going to be you and God. And you're going to have to give an account for the deeds done in your body. So today, will you make that decision to receive Christ? Will you make that decision to rededicate your life? Will you make that decision to be a part of this ministry? Will you make that decision to receive prayer for that area in your life that you need God to help you in? One, on the count of three, two, three. Go ahead and raise your hand. I see your hands up. I see your hands up. I see your hands. I see your hands. Your hands are raised. Every hand that's raised, listen, you can put your hands down. I want to thank you for the courage that you just um, demonstrated by raising your hand but what I'm going to ask you to do now it's going to take a little more courage but I know you'll do it and I want to speak to you because I want to pray for you I want to pray for you I'm going to cut the mic off and I'm going to pray for you and all you have to do when you come up is just tell me if you're coming for one, two, three or four remember number one was to give your life to Christ for the first time number two was to rededicate your life to Christ number three was to join the church and number four was to receive prayer. Every person who had your hands raised, I want you to stand at your feet, meet me at the altar, and everybody else is clapping for them as they come. And they're screaming and they're clapping. Come on, come on, let them come. Come on, let's, let's thank God for them. 
Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for them. Hallelujah. Let's thank God. Give them a hand. Don't stop. Don't stop clapping. I adore you I just wanted to tell you Lord, I love you More than anything I love you, Jesus I love you, Jesus I worship and adore you Just want to tell you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you how much I love you. I love you, Jesus. Yes, I do. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you, Lord. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Let's pray now for these needs. Everything you've spoken in my ear, God already knew before you said it. And the Lord has healed you. I'm telling you, it's healed. you're healed. That's it, I'm telling you. I, I felt the power of God go through my hand into your body. You're healed. And I bring healing to every sick person who just requested prayer. I bring you healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now I'm going to pray for your needs and I want you to release your faith with me. Come on, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for each person here today. I thank you for the request that they've spoken. Now, Father, I pray in Jesus' name 
that you would bring healing to every sickness. I rebuke every infirmity. I rebuke every sickness. I rebuke every disease. I command it to leave their bodies. From the crown of their heads to the tips of their toes, I decree your healing power flows in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray for those who have requested healing in families. I pray that you would bring healing. I pray that you would bring peace. I pray that you would bring forgiveness. I pray that you would bring restoration. Restoration. Lord, I pray for that one who has struggled and have had a hard time to forgive themselves. Lord, I pray that you would bring healing in that mind and healing in that heart. I rebuke that spirit of guilt. I rebuke that spirit of condemnation. I rebuke that spirit of shame. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for healing in families. I pray for love to flow. Where there's been unforgiveness and strife and contention, let the love of God flow in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray for that loved one, that child, that son that is wayward, that is going through some things. I pray that you send angels right now. I, I pray that angels will be on assignment. In the name of Jesus. I pray for that one who's preparing for surgery. Lord, I pray that you'll be with them tomorrow as they go for surgery. And that you would anoint the doctors and give them wisdom. And all will be, will be well. In Jesus' name. Healing is taking place. I pray for mental healing, emotional healing. The anointing is strong. In the name of Jesus, be well. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. Let me say this. When I lay my hands on you, when I lay my hand, I want nobody touching it right now. When I lay my hands on you, the power of God will go through you. And you will feel God's healing presence. Praise. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Oh, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. And Lord, I pray for wisdom. I pray for knowledge and understanding and guidance and direction. In the name of Jesus. There's healing taking place around this altar. I'm telling you, the presence of the Holy Spirit is here. I'm going to say this because I just heard the Lord say this. There's somebody in this room, and, and, and this is not to embarrass you. But I'm going to speak a word of knowledge because it just dropped in my spirit. There is a person here, there's a very dark spirit over you. It's a spirit of depression. And this spirit is trying to kill you. Oh. It is literally trying to take your mind. It's a dark spirit. But I bring you hope today. Now you are functioning, but you are very depressed. You're in this room. You're not just dealing with a chemical imbalance. You're dealing with a demon spirit. Now, I'm going to give you two options. 
Because I know how people sometimes think. If you would like to receive deliverance now, you're not concerned about nobody's opinion, I can pray for you right now and get you free. Or, but it has to be immediately after service, I can pray for you in the prayer room and get you free. But I wish you would come now because there's a strong anointing on me. And when the anointing is present, that's when deliverance takes place. The Lord is going to set you free. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. There's another person here. You should be here right now. I'm going to give you a couple seconds. Because see, listen. I just taught a message. You can't be concerned about people's opinion. I've dealt with demonic darkness in my life. I've dealt with things. That God delivered me. Fear. Fear was a strong spirit. Tried to come against me one time. And I had to get free. I said, Father, I thank you that you've not given me a spirit of fear. The fear of death. Because when you walk in the will of God and you're anointed, the enemy will talk to you about it. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I remember I had to face that demon. I didn't have nobody to pray for me for that. I didn't have nobody to lay hands like I'm getting ready to do for you. I had to stand on the word. I had to renew my mind to the word. I had to speak the word and I got free. It's okay if there's some things that you deal with. But I'm telling you, today is your freedom day. And that demon spirit, because that's what it is, is a spirit. I'm getting ready to command it to release its hold on you. And it will obey. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to put your hand on her stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You devil of death. You spirit of death. You spirit of depression. I command you, come out, let her go, let her go, let her go, I break your power, I break your authority, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to let her, there it is, there it is, that spirit just left, the joy of the Lord is your strength, somebody give God praise, somebody give God praise, somebody give God praise, somebody give God praise, it's done, it's done. It's done. It's done. Come on, somebody. The Lord has done something. You gotta praise God. Somebody ought to praise God. Now, I'm, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I don't believe some of you understand the spirit world. Your countenance looks different. The Lord has done something for you supernaturally. Y'all don't understand. You don't understand the spirit world. That spirit left. I saw it leave you. I saw it leave you. It's gone. And you're going to have a joy and a peace 
that you haven't felt and seen in a long time. Somebody give God praise. Oh, come on. Give him glory. There's one other person. There's one other person. The Lord said, I'm extending to you help right now. Hallelujah. You all are healed and you're blessed. God has answered our prayers. Go back to your seats rejoicing because it's already done. And you're going to have a testimony. I'm telling you, the Lord has healed you. Hallelujah. And to God be the praise. And to God be the praise. I'm telling you, it's best to take advantage of the anointing when it's present. See, I could pray for you in that room over there, but I'm going to do it by faith. That's not to say the anointing would be on me. That means it might, it might not come as quick. Because the anointing removes burdens instantly. So glad you came. But there's another person here. Oh, God. Oh, God. I command this spirit of darkness to go. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. Now, let me say this. The Lord is going to help you to relinquish some things. That matters of the heart now. Because I'm going to tell you what I see. The Lord said as soon as you forgive them your deliverance will come forth. Lord, give her the grace to do it. In the name of Jesus, Satan, I break your power. I command you to loose your hold. Let yes, yes, go free, go free, go free in Jesus' name, amen. You received that word, yes, yes. Give God praise, somebody. Give God praise. Come on, everybody, standing on your feet. to say this and please don't get offended I have to obey God I do what the Lord tell me to do are you moving up here yes I'm glad you came on let me tell you why let me tell you what I just heard the Lord say the Bible says at a certain season an angel came down and troubled the waters and whoever stepped in was made whole there's an anointing for deliverance in this area right now God said, tell my people one last time to move while the water is troubled. Come on.
Welcome. Come on. Come on. Now I'm going to say this. The power of God is going to touch you. The power of God is going to touch you. This devil that has tormented you, this darkness that has suppressed you, this cloud that's been over your life, it's like this cloud of darkness. Oh, Rapanda, la Kisha, la Branda. The Lord is getting ready to set you free. There's going to be a joy and a peace. And it's not going to be something you feel out here. It's going to be in here, in your spirit. And you're going to know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that God has done something for you. You believe this? Okay. Now I'm just going to pray a simple prayer. It's not in my ability. It's in his ability. God is going to touch you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You devil of darkness. Now when I speak like that, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the spirit. You devil of darkness, come out! I set you free. I set you free. I set you free! In the name of Jesus! Come out of it. You ready to be free? Huh? Okay. Now listen. God's going to touch you. Where's the ladies at? Yeah, y'all come on. Sister Sharon, I need all of the women that work the altar to come. Come to me. Sit right here. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bring deliverance to you. I bring deliverance to you. I command every tormenting devil of darkness that has tormented your life come out of you. I set you free. Come out of her. I set her free. I break the power of darkness in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I want y'all to pray, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. is happening in the name of Jesus Christ I set you free I set you free I set you free now the power of God is already moving right here now I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ I bring freedom to you this sister I bring freedom to you I bring freedom to your life I bring liberty to your life I set you free from that devil of darkness. Get out! Get out! In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. 
You ready? Yes. Now let me tell you something. You got to know something. This is the power of God. This is not the work of a man. This is the power of God. God is doing something in these lives. I don't have the ability to do it. But God is doing, I'm telling you, she'll never be the same. Come on. Now let me... <laughs> let me say something precious listen I said this is your first time have you ever fell out like that before she said no I said you didn't think you were going to fall out did you she said no but you know the power of God touched you and what I love about Jesus is he does things for people who don't go to church see some church people know how to go with the flow these are people who don't even know nothing about this but she knows that the Lord has just touched her and she knows she'll never be the same again. And look at your face. The joy of the Lord is on you. The joy of, somebody give God praise. Because I, I just picked this up. I'm not even going to touch people. Because some of you think, now I'm not applying no pressure to nobody. This is not a magic show. This is God's power. Lift your hand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command that demon of darkness. You spirit of darkness, I command you to go out of this body. Leave now. In Jesus' name, I break your influence. I break your power. There it is. It's happening right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be set free. Be set free. Leave her now. Leave her now. Get out. In the name of... That's right. It's happening. Somebody just praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. That's the power of God right here. That's the power of God. Don't touch it. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. Somebody give God glory. You are free! You are free! You are free! You are free! Now look at me. Look at me. The power of God just touched you. You are free in Jesus' name. That spirit is gone. That spirit is gone. You know what? Now I'm going to say something. Mm. You're going to you're going to experience the love of God in a way you've never experienced before. Because even where there has been this starvation of love from human beings that your heart has longed for even since you was a little girl. Oh. I just saw something about you. I'm not at liberty to speak, but I'm gonna I saw the Lord just showed me something. But let me just say something to you. You are healed, you are delivered, and you are set free in Jesus' name. Go in peace. It's already done. That's all I like. It's already done. The Lord has done it for you. The Lord has done it for you. You'll never be the same again. You'll never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That spirit of darkness is leaving. You believe it?
In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring deliverance to you. You devil of darkness, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the spirit. You devil of darkness, listen to me. I command you, in the name of Jesus Christ whom I serve, come out of her. You spirit of darkness, you devil of darkness, leave her now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I adjure you, I command you, by the authority of Jesus' name, be free. It's happening right now. That spirit is listening to the power of Jesus' name. It's leaving you. You are free. I don't want to scare you. Sometimes people don't understand this. But I'm not talking to you. See, it's still there though. And he knows that I know. He's trying to hide. Pray in the Holy Ghost. What you doing? Pray in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Come out of her. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. I bring deliverance to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You devil of darkness. Let her go now. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. I break the power of darkness off of you. Go free now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. The Lord told me to touch you. His power is on you. Oh! Be free. Yes. 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 Y'all pray in the Holy Ghost. It's happening. God is freeing you. That tormenting devil, that spirit of death that's been lurking over your life, that devil that's trying to kill you, I command that spirit to loose. Go from you. Go from you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, Rabasia Talagosa. Oh, Rabaria Socorra Bacasa. Come on, pray, 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 pray. The Lord is doing something for you. Now, are you ready to be delivered? Very much so. Very much so. You can go back to your seat. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. I see you in the spirit singing. I don't know her. But I see you like worshiping God. It's almost like she's a worship leader. Almost like you're a worship leader. And I see almost like God is going to download prophetic songs in your spirit. This is why the devil wants to kill you. In the name of Jesus Christ, your destiny will come forward. Everything that God has for your life will be realized. I break the spirit of darkness off of you. I command every tormenting devil. Let her go. Satan, I command you. Let her go. Come and touch her stomach. In the name of Jesus, oh Rabanda Rakoso, be free. Whew. 
come in. give God praise yes I love it it's a beautiful thing I'm telling you man do you know how real the power of God is you'll never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ are y'all both coming for prayer okay hallelujah Who raised you? Who raised you as a young man? Your mom? Yeah. And you know some things about the Lord from a young age. Yes. Is that true? Okay. Yeah. The hand of the Lord is on you. Yes. I break every demonic conspiracy over your life. Every satanic assignment. Father, I bless him in the name of Jesus, and I set him free. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Your problem is not necessarily depression as much as it is. You, you, you feel like, I don't, but what's my purpose? It's like, Lord, I need to find a sense of purpose. The Lord is going to speak to you, and he's going to, I see, what's, it's uh, March, by July of this year, God's going to download some things in your spirit. And I see the spirit of entrepreneurship in you. Because you know how to make things happen. And the Lord's going to show you some things. And he's going to give you a sense. See, your biggest issue right now is just you need to walk in your purpose. You just need to know what you're called to do. You're fine. All is well with you. You believe that? I'm telling you what I heard the Lord say. All is well with you. Go in peace. You're good. The Lord's going to bless you though. He's going to show you some things. Now, Father, now I do see some things here. In the name of Jesus, you devil of darkness, you spirit of darkness, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, take your hand off of her. Loose her now. Get out. Get out. Leave. 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 I command you to go. I break your power now. It's going. It's going. Get out. Oh, glory. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. Go free. In Jesus' name. It's already done. Somebody give God praise. I bring healing to you. I bring deliverance to you. In the name of Jesus. I bring healing to you. I bring deliverance to you. By the authority of Jesus' name, I break the powers of darkness off of your life. And I command you in Jesus' name to be free. 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 Satan, I adjure you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the God I serve, whose name I stand in, leave her. Leave her now. Let her go. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go. Leave. Leave now. Leave now. In Jesus' name, it's happening right now. 
I said it's happening right now. I said it's happening right now. Somebody ought to give God praise. It's happening right now. Somebody ought to shout unto God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Did I pray for everybody? Oh, I missed somebody? You're fine. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm a, you're getting ready to get delivered. Let me tell you what she just told me. She said last year she tried to sell her soul to the devil. And she got this tattoo. She was dedicating herself to the devil. And she said now her throat is on fire. Now, let me tell you something. Now some of you, I know some of you are just so oblivious to the spirit world. You don't understand what we're fighting up against. There are real forces of darkness in the world. But the Lord is getting ready. I call every spirit attached to this tattoo <laughs> get out I said get out of her somebody give God praise somebody give God praise somebody give God praise somebody give God praise you free your soul get out get out She's free! She's free! She's free! She is free! Those demons have left! Your, your soul belongs to Jesus, not to the devil! Somebody give God praise! Somebody give God praise! Oh, come on, somebody! God, I'm telling you, give God, come on somebody, come on, give God praise, come on, give God praise, give God praise, oh, come on, come on, come on, hallelujah. My God! My God! My God! My God! Give Him glory! Give Him glory! Oh, ba 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 ba! Kaso kona ba!
Let me tell you, the power of God is real. And none of you that receive prayer today will ever be the same. I keep looking over here at this young man with the white sweater on. Because the hand of the Lord is on him. Is this your husband? Are, are y'all together? Are you married? Oh, not yet. I, I said not yet. Y'all heard me say not yet. Because I see the Lord is going to do a great work with y'all. And I'm just going to speak what I see. There is a pastoral anointing on you. God is going to use you in a mighty way. Somebody give God praise. Now watch what the Lord will do. There's ministry in your belly. Are you, are you a preacher? Your, your daddy is, huh? Oh, it's close to you. I see ministry on you, though. That's, is this your first time here? First time here, huh? So I don't know, never talked to you before. But watch what the Lord will do in y'all's lives. Just watch. That's all I'm going to say about it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man. Oof. This is what church is about. We're going home. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That young lady in the back, never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. I'm telling you, never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Look at her. Glory to God. Look at look, look at what the Lord is. That, man. It's worth it. When I see this right here, I say it's worth it. It's worth everything you have to pay. The cost that you have is worth it. This is what it's about. That young lady right there beside you, Sister Angel, never be the same. This is what it's about. That young lady there, look at her, lifting her hands up and worshiping God right there in the middle. You'll never be the same again. That's right, you. You just looked and said, I'm talking about you. You'll never be the same. The love of God is real. Yes. Never be the same. And you're going to see that that thing that we talked about and prayed over, you're going to see that thing leave you. Yeah, it's already done. All right. Thank God for our guest again. Can we thank God for the guest? First time guest. First time guest. Wave at me so I can see you. Huh? Huh? Who else? Huh? Anybody else over here? First time? All right. Okay. Praise God. Never be the same again, young lady. God has done something for you. Now, what's the relationship? Are y'all together? No, okay. You just sit beside each other. Okay. You know each other. Okay. Awesome. You'll never be the same again. You'll never be the same again. Father, thank you for the word today. Thank you for your presence today. Thank you for your power today. Okay, Lord, yes. For those of you online, if you need deliverance, just lift your hands right now. I'm going to send this prayer to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break the spirit of darkness, depression, and death off of the people of God who are watching online. They couldn't be here 
in the, in the physical. But Lord, there's no distance in the spirit. So I send the word of deliverance. I send the word of healing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring healing to you right now in your home. I bring deliverance to you right now. I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command every demon of darkness to leave you now in Jesus' mighty name. You are free. You are free. You are free. Father, we thank you for the word today, and we thank you for this time in your presence. Now, Lord, as we go from this place, thank you for the angels of God that are encamped around about us, and no weapon formed against us will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you.